Hey guys, Crazy Postman here. Well, we got a fun one for you today. So you can see I'm in a pretty big yard and this is just the backyard. This is the front yard and it goes from the house all the way out there to the street. We'll do a little walk around right now and I'll show you exactly how big it is. Well, up until today, I've been using a robo mower. And it's been out here about a season or two. I'm not exactly sure when I got it, but it's actually in pretty rough shape. If you can see, the uh, the buttons are pretty much gone there. It has bumps and scratches all over it. Well, anyway, I got the replacement for this guy. Hopefully, the Luba will be able to do a little bit better. Now, you can see the size difference here, looking at the Robo mower and comparing it to the Luba over there. The Luba is much smaller, but it is much more capable, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, this thing can do about a third of an acre, maybe a half an acre. It only goes to about halfway out into this front yard. So hopefully, that Luba will be able to do the whole front yard without any boundary wires. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to do a first time setup on the Luba and we're going to see if we can set up its a wireless boundary system. It uses GPS and RTK. Now you can see here the area that I'm going to put it in is probably not going to be the best for GPS reception sitting back there against the wall on the house. But what I plan on trying first anyway Instead of installing this on those two poles there, those two poles would attach to the back of this base station over here, and it definitely wouldn't raise it above the fence level, and it also would be pretty blocked by the house here. So what we're going to do, we're going to see if we can install this RTK to that old dish network pole that's on the roof. I don't know if it'll work. That pole looks much thicker than this. But maybe with some Southern engineering, we can uh, make it stick up there somehow. So you joined me up here at the edge of the roof, and I got some bad news to report. Unfortunately, even with the screws all the way loose, this will not fit over the standard satellite mount pole. That is just unfortunate. So now we're going to have to compromise. And install the pole down there somewhere all right so since we talked last you can see something has changed here and what i ended up doing was just sticking the pole that comes with it down into the pole that was already there and i put some tape around the end of it so they fit snugly and it does not move at all so kind of a redneck way of fixing the problem but there you have it now this still may not fix the problem because this gives it a lot of view to the front yard but it's out of the line of sight from the very backyard we still may have to change this and attach it to that fence line or something over there but we'll see how it works i'm going to leave it here for now okay so here's the current situation there goes dad on the cub cadet electric 42 inch I do have a review on that if you want to check it out. The current situation here is I got the robo mower removed and I got everything except you can see <laughs> the old wires coming up out of the ground. One of those heads off that way and the other end heads off that way and that's how the robo mower used to work. There's a perimeter wire all the way around this yard here. But hopefully we're not going to need that anymore because of uh, that thing right there. We got to get these uh, stakes here and we're going to screw this to attach it to the ground. You can see each little point right there. There's one, there's one, and then there's a few in the back. So I'm going to get this thing firmly anchored to the ground 
and then we're one step closer to setting up our wireless perimeter to recap we got the base installed we put the spikes in the ground to hold it and then we got the rtk up there on the roof everything is plugged in and ready to go so we're going to put the key in the lawnmower and i'm going to push it back to the charging station the key just goes right back here okay and then i'm just going to push this thing back into its little house Just like that. Don't know if that's a good beep or not. Now we're going to go into the app and I'm gonna show you everything I do to get it set up to mow the yard here. Okay, so here we are in the Luba app. So we're gonna go to network settings and we gotta put the password in here. Crap. new firmware upgrade so we're going to go ahead and upgrade the firmware real quick and then i will get back with y'all all right so i'm having uh, quite the time uh, getting this upgraded it said to restart the luba i pulled the key out and put it back in assuming that's how to restart it since it didn't tell me but now it's not connecting luba is not online I've closed the app and reopened it, and Luba is not connecting. What is going on here? Should we pull the key out again? Put the key back in. Okay, it beeped. Let's go ahead and close the app and reopen it again. Okay, there's a new firmware. Let's go ahead and try it again. Upgrade failed. Please restart Luba manually and try again. So it's just, it will not do the upgrade. I, it's failed twice now. One eternity later. Okay. It looks like upgrade in progress again. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope it gets upgraded this time. Oh, please do not exit the page or close the app during transmission. Okay, so it's probably downloading the firmware update maybe through the Bluetooth connection instead of the Wi-Fi connection. I'm not sure, because if you look here on the screen, the Bluetooth connection is dark, but the Wi-Fi connection is light. So it should probably say also stay near the Luba because I think that's what happened the first time I started to walk off to go inside to use the restroom. Successful firmware upgrade. So let's uh, see what our options are here. Unbound firmware version upgrade network. Okay, so we're ready to enter the map. Uh-oh. Luba firmware version does not match the app version. What does this even mean? So I can't do anything? Let's delete the app and try to re-download it and see what happens. This is not really great progress here. Okay, so we're gonna open the app. I just reinstalled it. What's this, another firmware? 
Okay, maybe there's another firmware upgrade. And they just have to uh, upgrade in order. So it just restarted again. The red lights are flashing down there on the side and it's beeping. I'm assuming that means it's rebooting. Let's go ahead and uh, exit the app and come back into it. That way we get a fresh connection to the mower. I'm going to say it appears to be rebooted. Let's see if we can do anything now. Enter the map. Error report. RTK reference station. Well, that's online over there. Let's go over here and check it out. It has a green light. I assume it's on. It's got a green light and the antennas are all plugged into it. So... Oh, there we go. Looking back at the screen now, it says everything is okay. Congratulations, Luba positioning success. Next. Luba recharge test. So it's going to move and then see if it can get back to the station. Do I have to uh, hit that button again? Oh, there it goes. I did. All right, ready. Please click the button below to create the first task. Okay, before you start mowing, make sure the lawn is no higher than 10 centimeters. Yeah, sure, it looks fine. Phone power. Ensure your phone is fully charged to avoid data loss during drawing. Clear items from the yard, no dogs, yada yada. Network connection timeout. Within the highlighted line is the area where Luba works. Avoid hitting things. You control the Luba to go around things. When controlling the rocker, other areas will be locked. I don't know what this means. Luba is charging. Descent. Avoid hitting things. So I'm going to get behind it so my steering is not backwards. Okay. Here we go. So now we just got to go around the whole lawn at two miles an hour. So here we are. I'm just going to do this. I turned to map out this just little area here. And it just stopped. Oh, there, it's going again. It said the, the satellite connectivity was bad and it stopped moving. And what I'm thinking is this tree just blocked 
the satellites because I can still see the the RTK receiver over there so I think it just had a, a bad satellite it says that it's connected to 21 satellites posi positioning status 4 not sure what those numbers mean but we're going to continue on since it is still moving now it is very easy to control by the way you push forward on this thumb here and then you steer it with this one but it if you're a gamer <laughs> this is going to be very easy for you you can you can pivot in one spot or you can move forward and turn at the same time I'm going to keep it a inch or two away from the wall here while I'm going around. But yeah, when I went under this tree, it lost satellite connectivity. And that was the first time since I started going around this whole yard here that it stopped. It said, uh, please wait for a better connection. But then it started all by itself again, so... I guess that's okay. I'm guessing that the satellite receiver is right here where it says do not cover. That's probably where the GPS receiver is. Don't know that for sure, just a, a guess. It'll be nice. It's spring. We're about to have to clean the pond out and get it all up and running for for summertime running a little behind over here we definitely don't want it f driving into the pond so I give it a little a few extra inches over here <laughs> see now I'm just pivoting in one spot I'm just going to drive a little bit onto the the sidewalk here to make sure it gets the edges good. And we will pivot here. And then we will move forward. And then we will pivot here. Okay. And then we will move forward again. And I'm just going to keep one tire just a little bit on the sidewalk. Don't hit anything while I'm programming it. Or it's going to hit the same thing every day. You can kind of see the old wire sticking up there for the robo mower. Don't need that anymore, hopefully. We are just about back around to the charging station. So I've outlined most of the front yard. I don't have it going out in the ditch, kind of close to the road, but for the rest of it, I have it doing. Now we're going to create some no-go zones. I wonder if I can carry Luba. <laughs> if it will be mad when I carry it. Let's see what happens. I'm going to carry it to this island over here only because it would have taken like three minutes to drive over here. So we're going to edit. We're going to create a no-go zone. I 
So that's how you make a no-go zone. I'm gonna make a few more around some of the bigger trees out there. So now we're doing another no-go zone and we're just gonna drive around this tree. This next tree, so I walked ahead of it because it's kind of slow and I'm tired, I don't wanna carry it. This next tree has kind of a messy root system so I'm gonna give it kind of a wide no-go zone around this tree. You can even see the roots come out all the way out here, but there's nothing I can do about that. It's just gonna have to hit it. But I'm gonna go around all these others. All right, so this is my final tree. I'm way out in the front yard now. You can see looking back towards the house pretty far away. So let's go around this final tree here. <laughs> Manually control the speed limit. You're telling me I walked around this whole yard on the slowest speed limit setting? Oh no. Let's see if I speed it up what happens here. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? I could have been mapping at turbo speed. Look how fast this thing goes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look at that. It's going faster than I can walk. That's crazy. I love that, Luba. Thank you for doing that. It's gonna beat me back to the house, for sure. I'm going to just put it back on its dock for a while and take a break, and then I'm gonna map out some of the backyard settings. Okay, I'm gonna tell it to just go back to its dock. So what you do, you hit home and then start, and it will go back to its house. All by itself, supposedly. All right, lunchtime's over, and we got the whole front yard mapped out, so now we're gonna start the backyard here, and this is gonna go a little bit quicker because I now know the Luba will drive faster if I tell it to. We're gonna make a couple different areas here. I'm not gonna have it like mow the whole backyard because there's just so many trees. I would be here for hours making no-go zones so what I'm gonna do here is you can kind of see this more upkept front part to the backyard here so I'm going to map out this front section of the backyard and then I'm going to take it back here to the the way back and there's another open area back there and I will have it map out an area in the the way backyard too and then i'm just going to kind of ignore the middle so let's get started i'll make a time lapse again of me doing this I'm going to make this back area here into more than one section because it's going to be easier on me and the mower probably. So let's create, add another task area. It says avoid, avoid hitting things. All right, here we go. crashing All 
All right, so I didn't really map the whole yard out, but you can see here it's going to take 830 minutes to do this 5,335 square meters that I have mapped. Let's uh, see if we can get it to mow right now. Load all areas. Start. Okay, so now that's my my dad back there. So it's gonna start mowing. It's moving at a pretty good clip. Now it's gonna have some kind of strategy. I don't know what its strategy is right now, but it made some kind of strategy. I do have it on 30 height, whatever that is. It doesn't sound like it's uh, cutting anything right now, so obviously 30. Thirty is below whatever height the grass is. I may see if I can lower it a little bit here. Let's see. Pause. Oh. It was uh, all the way up. That was not 30. That was uh, 60. You can hear it lowering. Okay. So now it's at 30. Continue from break point. Not sure what strategy it's working, but it's doing its own thing. So it's definitely cutting stuff now. He's dragging against the side there. So that push button didn't really do nothing because it drug against the side and kept going. Let's see what it's going to do here. Editor Crazy Postman here. After watching this thing for most of the day, um, it does do crazy stuff around the charger area. So I'm not sure about that or why it's doing it, but you'll see more of that later on. I'm not sure what its plan is here. It's just a little bit crazy. We'll let this go for a while and then uh, I'll check back in with y'all after it's been going for 20 or 30 minutes. Look at that, a giant hawk out there. It got stuck right here for about 10 seconds. It had gotten too close to the wall and got stuck there. But it seems to have gotten itself out and now it's... Uh, going around again for a second pass I don't know why every time it comes around it rams into its base over there for no reason and then it does this weird dance here I'm not sure what's going on 
but every time it comes around it will just ram right into its base and trigger the front bumper we'll have to check that out next time it comes around for a pass I will uh, be over here to watch it to see what it does but it took it quite a while <laughs> to get all the way around the yard for the first pass well we got stuck again on our second pass here it's just uh, high centered on a root so we may have to make that a no-go zone See if it can make it now. All right. Well, that's what it got stuck on right there. Just a root. <laughs> so much for the super powerful four-wheel drive. But I guess if it gets high centered, that doesn't really help it too much. I'm going to watch what it does when it gets up there to the charging station. So, we didn't seem to have a problem with this RTK unit here. Uh, reaching the back end of the house I don't think I mean it seemed like it worked just as good as it does here at the very far end of the yard so that's probably gonna be fine let's see what it does here And there it goes. I don't know why it does that weird dance over here in the corner. I don't know if I can adjust the map just on this corner here or if I'll have to remap this whole area and all those no-go zones. That would suck. So if you're listening, Luba Manufacturer, would be really nice if we could uh, maybe clean up a corner you know, connect two boundary lines together without having to redo the whole thing. Let's see if it gets stuck on this root over here again. Oh, made it over at this time. No problem. It's going to go around the whole yard again. It is going to take it quite some time to finish this front yard. And then the backyard. Okay, I think it just went crazy. It turned this corner here, and instead of making the curve and going following its line, it's just making a cut across the center of the yard. So that's crazy. What is it doing? So it was going in rows around the edge of the yard. And now it just took off down the middle of the yard. Has it gone rogue? Like, it's supposed to go along that edge and then turn and then go back towards the base. But it's just like, yo, I'm just going to go across the middle of the yard. Editor Crazy Postman here again. I did eventually figure out what was going on. When you first start mowing... It does, I don't know, three or four passes all the way around the yard to make a, an edge. And then it'll just go to one of the sides and then work back and forth for the rest of the cut. So I guess it just decided to take the most direct route to the other side of the yard. And that was just straight across the yard. Because it does get over here to the driveway and ends up being okay. It just starts cutting over here normally. I don't know what logic it's using, but it was 
you know doing a pattern it was going around the it was going around the outside of the yard and just slowly you know coming in so I've been sitting here watching it for a while and what I think it's doing is it's going to make straight lines back and forth I think it did an outline around the edge of the property and now it's gonna go back and forth across the middle but it has to do some weird stuff over there because that driveway kind of bows out and the trees all have uh, no-go zones around them so that's just causing it to have to do a lot of work over there I wonder how it's op optimized is it make straight lines above all else or is there some kind of time optimization going on so it's about to hit a no-go area right now okay yep it's backed up it's just sure having to do a lot of work over there I don't know if you can see but he's definitely made some lines you can tell where he's been because he goes back and forth so many times like look here at the dirt this dirt where he's just gone around and around and around there is so many tire marks in this dirt like he's putting some miles on those tires and you can you can see the lines in the grass He's gone back and forth so many times. But this is just crazy. You definitely can't say that it's not thorough. He's spent so much time. So, like two hours, an hour and a half. I don't know how long he's been going. But to just do from the, that road... To about right here he spent two hours over here and <laughs> look how dirty he is look at that he looks like he's been in battle it is 655 it's actually pretty dark the camera brightens it up a little he finally used up all his battery and I swear he still hasn't gotten past the furthest tree so his whole battery, he only went like 30 feet. Well, of course, and all the north and south here, but the east and west, he only went about 30 feet wide. He's headed over there to charge, and I'm going to go home. I'm going to leave him to it. He'll probably be going all night. So there is lots of light. So the red lights are flashing, the green light's flashing. There's also a green light up on that rtk thing it's not really a stealthy operation here between all these these lights flashing the app thinks it did area one which area one is way back in the back side of the property and it definitely hasn't been back there but it says it has well i just so. wanted to show you real quick what i'm talking about so you can see here this is what it's supposed to look like. You can see the the thin ring around the edge of the yard. And then this thicker white part here, he's working on starting to go back and forth. This is what it originally looked like. Now let me skip forward and I'll show you what it looks like later on in the day. I don't know what happened to this screen recording and why it's so fuzzy. But you can clearly see here, well maybe not clearly see, but... You can see this far, far back area back here, it thinks it already mowed, it's white. And then there's this weird white connecting line going into the big front zone that it's now mowing on. So I think it just went crazy because it has never been to that back side of the yard to mow. And it says it did. It's only mowed in this number three labeled area here. And it just has one little strange long line coming from that number one area. So something obviously got screwed up here in its little brain. I don't even know if it's going to mow back there. 
but we'll see what happens. I'm going to let it keep going all night here, and um, I'll see what the yard looks like tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon. I ain't getting up too early. Like I said, it's a it's a 60-mile drive for me to get here. So we'll let him uh, finish his thing, and I will check back in. I know I already said I was going to end this episode, but now I'm just curious since it's been such a an interesting I'm not going to say a disaster because it's doing what it's supposed to do but getting stuck around those trees out in the front yard for what seems like two hours I'm definitely going to have to cut that off the map probably and just mow that manually and let him do the, the center part of the yard because that just took too much time and a whole battery and he's still got all this right in here to mow all the way back there and then way back in the backyard so we'll let him do his thing tonight and I'm gonna go home and I will come back tomorrow afternoon and see what this yard looks like see y'all then well it's the next day and unfortunately the mower never went back out after it charged so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reprogram the whole front yard and I'm gonna exclude those trees over there and then I'm going to tell it to go back out and mow again and see if it can get more done I thought this mower had a charge and resume feature so I'm not sure why it didn't go back out but if it's not going to resume after it charges, that's not going to be very good because this is obviously more than it can mow on one charge. I just uh, set up the new schedules. I redid the front yard. My assumption is that it's going to go to the furthest point and do a little back and forth before it starts making big swipes through the yard. So. I'll stay here and watch it 15 or 20 minutes and then I'm going to head home and hopefully it will finish what it's supposed to today and it will charge and resume like it's supposed to. The planner said uh, this front yard is going to take 400 and some odd minutes to mow. So that's a pretty good uh, time commitment to the lawnmower. So thanks for watching this episode. I will see y'all in a few weeks with an update on how this thing is performing in this big yard. I'll see y'all in the next one.